West Cherry Street in Jessup. It's time now for the latest in local sports. And sports is going to be a game four in the National League Series between the Atlanta and Los Angeles. That's this afternoon here on Big Dog Country, FM 105.5, 315. At the pregame show, 4.30 first pitch as the Braves win Sunday night 6-5 on a Freddie Freeman home run. They broke a 5-5 tie, gives the Braves the victory. Atlanta jumped out to a nice 5-0 lead as rookie Ronald Acuna hit a grand slam for the Braves. Braves trail two games to one and can tie the series with the win this afternoon. In other National League series, Milwaukee swept Colorado over the weekend. The Brewers host game one of the National League Championship Series. That gets underway this Friday. Braves hoping to be in it, but they've got to win today and win Later this week in Los Angeles to win the series against the best three out of five series. In the American League, it's the Yankees and the Red Sox tied at one. Houston leading Cleveland two games to none. Triple header day in baseball, one thirty is Houston and Cleveland. At 4.30, it's Atlanta hosting Los Angeles. And tonight is the Red Sox at New York at 7.40 for game three of that series. High school football, Friday night, the team moves to 7-0 and 1-0 in region play, winning a 21-20 game on a blocked extra point by Logan Pritchard in overtime. At Statesboro, a game in which the Jackets had to defeat both the Blue Devils and the referees. GHSA needs to check out this film because when it's third and three and the Jacket defense throws the runner for a one-yard loss, please explain how it's a first down. Explain no late hit out of bounds on their quarterback. But when a Yellow Jacket coach asks, where's the flag? Ref says, here's your flag and throws a 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty against Wayne's coach. Explain no pass interference on Ashby Crib when two Statesboro defenders mug him and throw him to the ground. Explain the line judge continually marking the ball a yard and a half further up on many plays, giving the Blue Devils extra yards. Explain why the officiating crew is from Statesboro when the game involves Statesboro. And explain why everyone in the stand sees the Statesboro running back move early, including the Statesboro coaching staff on fourth and five where they score a touchdown, but not one of the six officials see the running back move early. Enough is enough. Let the kids play, determine the game, and please, GHSA, look at the film. Fire someone, suspend someone, do something to send a message. This type of officiating has got to stop because I simply can't take it any longer. Now to the game. Statesboro, to their credit, came to play. Their game plan worked to perfection, running the ball, working the clock, and keeping the game close, which they did as we had to go to overtime to win it. On Statesboro's first possession, Jalen Robinson goes 99 yards for a touchdown, and the Blue Devils led early 7-zip. Wayne County on the suing kickoff. Trayvon Chance returns the ball all the way to that Statesboro 7. Wayne County comes up fourth and goal from the one, and Ashby Cripp takes it in to tie the game. See if we get any indication by the official. No. He's got to be in. He's in. He's got to be in. I haven't seen an official yet. Yeah, he is. He's in. Finally, touchdown. Wayne County on the board. 651 7 6. PAT good at this point. The score seven seven, but the Jackets get their first lead of the game on this twelve yard touchdown run by quarterback Shamar Taylor. Balls at the twelve, first and ten at the twelve. MJ, nope. Shamar's going to keep it. Shamar going to fire side. Shamar trying to get in the end zone. Dives. Did he get in? Great touchdown, dive. Shamar Taylor. Wayne County's got their first lead of the game. 10-22, third quarter. It's Wayne thirteen, Statesboro seven. Jackets get tied 14-14. As Statesburg comes back to make it a ball game, Wayne County at the end of the ball game misses a field goal in regulation, and we head to overtime. Wayne County gets the ball first at the 15-yard line of Statesburg. MJ takes it from the 15 to the 8. Statesburg gets flagged for uh, illegal substitution. Ball placed half the distance to the goal. MJ scores to make it 21-14. Statesburg scores on their first possession to make it 21-20, and they set up for the extra point, and that's when the Jackets defense comes through, blocks the PAT, and Wayne County wins it 21-20. The PAT, again, has got to be good to force a second overtime. Snap down. He it! He After the game, we talk with Coach Ken Creed, who credits his team for overcoming all the adversity from Friday night. Bad, bad. I hate to be a, you know sour, but I, I love my kids. I love I love this community. We again, we have more people than they do. Our people follow our, our kids. Kids play hard, and they persevered through all kinds. I mean, a lot of teams would fold now. A lot of teams could not come through what these kids have been through the last two weeks. You know, last last week, second half, the night, the whole night. Uh, it's just amazing how tough these kids are. Well, again, 
credit to you and the coaching staff, credit these kids. Again, they hung tough and did what they had to do and come up with that big PAT because that was huge to get out of there 21-20. Ooh, victory. Still want to be. Victory, stay sweet. <laughs> winner, winner, ticket dinner, we'll take it. Okay, coach. And again, Wayne County wins at 21-20. They stay unbeaten, go to 7-0. They've got homecoming this Friday night against South Effingham. Parade on Thursday. Jacks look to go to 8-0, 2-0 in the region play Friday night. Elsewhere in the region, New Hampstead, no trouble. South Effingham, final score 34-16. Appling defeats Long 41-7. Pierce beats Brantley 49-7. Richmond Hill 41, Brunswick 7. Liberty over Tattano 31-7. Valdosta whipped up on Houston County 55-14. Bradwell over Effingham 27-8, and Northside Warner Robins beat Coffee 30-20. With the close win over Statesburg, and despite a 7-0 record, the state rankings dropped Wayne T- County two spots to, from 7th to 9th in the top 10 poll. Rome remains number 1, followed by Buford at 2, Stockbridge comes in at 3, Warner Robins 4, Carrollton 5, Dutchtown 6, Jones County at 6-1 comes in at number 7, Ware County at 4-2 comes in at number 8, then it's Wayne County at number 9, and Southwest DeKalb rounds out the top 10. Again, the rankings just for Fun and for the media and the fans means absolutely nothing in the big scheme of things. But that's your top ten in five A football after week eight in high school football. Jackets have three regular season games remaining: homecoming Friday, then the Thursday night game in Savannah against New Hampstead, then the region championship game Friday night, November second against Ware County here at JC Stadium. Gators had the weekend off; they get ready to host Statesboro this Friday night in Waycross. College football, good weekend for the Georgia teams. Georgia Tech started out Friday night with a huge win over Louisville, 66-31 the final score. Saturday, Georgia Southern defeats South Alabama for homecoming in Statesboro, 48-13. And Georgia no trouble at home for homecoming against Vandy, 41-13. Georgia remains unbeaten in 2018. Elsewhere in the SEC, Florida over LSU, 27-19. Georgia and LSU this Saturday at 3.30 in Baton Rouge. Texas A&M in overtime over Kentucky, 20-14. Red River Shootout goes to Texas over Oklahoma, 48-45. Miami comes from behind to beat Florida State, 28-27. And other games, it was Auburn losing to Mississippi State, 23-9. Clemson over Wake Forest, 63-3. And Notre Dame undefeated beats Virginia Tech, 45-23. Halfway through the college football season, here's your AP Top 25 at this time. Bama still one, Georgia still two, Ohio State three, and Clemson four. Notre Dame jumps up to number five. West Virginia up to number six. Washington comes in at number seven, followed by Penn State at eight. Texas ninth and University of Central Florida comes in at number 10. Oklahoma drops to 11. Michigan at 12. LSU 13. Gators jump up from 22nd to 14. Wisconsin 15. Hurricanes of Miami 16. Oregon Ducks 17. Kentucky with the loss drops to 18. Colorado at 19. NC State rounds up to top 20. Then it's Auburn 21, Texas A&M 22, South Florida 23, Mississippi State 24, and Cincinnati is at number 25. Sunday NFL football, the Falcons and Jaguars both lose on the road. Falcons fall to the Steelers. The final score 41-17. Jaguars lost to Kansas City by a score of 30-14. to Blake Borders with four interceptions on the day. Other scores, Buffalo 13, Titans 12, Bengals over the Dolphins 27-17. Browns win at home in overtime over the Ravens, 12-9. Lions over the Packers, 31-23. Jets down Denver, 34-16. Panthers over the Giants, 33-31. Chargers beat the Raiders, 26-10. Vikings over the Eagles, 23-21. Rams over Seattle, 33-31. And the Texans last night on Sunday Night Football beat the Cowboys, 19-16. Tonight is Monday Night Football, Washington and New Orleans. That's going to do it for latest in local sports. Again, a reminder, Braves baseball this afternoon. On Big Dog Country FM 105.5, the pregame at 315, first pitch at 430 from Atlanta. That's going to do it for the latest in local sports. Sports is brought to you each and every day at this time by your friends at Harris Ace Hardware. When you have an accident, you, not the insurance company, chooses the body shop, and you only need one estimate. All you have to do is call Jerome Riles at BNC Collision Center in downtown Scriven to deal with the adjusters and insurance company. Whether it's a little ding or a major crash, that B&C Collision Center across from Wazden Cabinet Shop in Scriven deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. Call them at 579-2274. That's 579-2274. A Rudy Toot Toot and open the chute. It's rodeo time in Scriven, Georgia, October the 12th and 13th. The 20th annual Willene Todd Memorial Rodeo. Brought to you by title sponsor Mike Birch Ford of Blackshare, Georgia, along with a long list of your friends and neighbors.